So we've seen that if we have a circuit with a capacitor and an inductor, we get oscillations. So the current, and similarly the voltage, goes around, looking something like cos 1 over root LC time. What's the period of this oscillation? The period is the time from one peak to the next, over which point the number inside the cos must have varied by 2 pi to bring the cos back to where it was in the beginning. So what we have is that 2 pi equals 1 over root LC times the time. So the time needed for one complete cycle is just 2 pi root LC. And the frequency, that's the number of cycles per second, is just one second over the time per cycle. So it equals 1 over 2 pi root LC. Now, for a typical capacitor has a capacitance of about, oh, I don't know, maybe a microfarad. A typical inductor is about a millihenry. So if you plug those numbers in, that's you know, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 3, that comes out as about 5,000 cycles per second, also known as hertz. So talking about 5 kilohertz. So this is not an oscillation you're going to see with your voltmeter. Watch the needle go from one side to the other and back. You're going to need an oscilloscope to this. It's actually more like radio frequencies. And if you change the capacitance or the inductance, you can get the frequency higher or lower over a considerable range. And that indeed is why these things are so important. One thing you can do is build a circuit that oscillates like this and then send its output up a, up a transmitter, and it's then a radio transmitter. Now, the trouble with this is that the oscillation by itself, will it go on forever? Well, if you have a circuit like this and there was no resistance, then yes, indeed, the, the uh, current will keep on, charge will keep on going back and forth and back and forth. But any real circuit is going to have some resistance in. So what will happen in a real circuit is, let's say you start off with quite a bit of charge. The charge will start oscillating, but gets smaller and smaller and smaller. They're keeping the same period as it goes down. If you want the oscillation to keep going with the same strength, you'll need to put some sort of amplifier in the circuit. And indeed, that's what they do in radio transmitters. These sort of things can also be used as radio receivers. Because a circuit like this, if you apply an alternating signal to it, it won't respond unless the alternating signal has just the right frequency, the frequency we've just worked out, 1 over 2 pi root LC. And if you get a frequency at just that right thing, it's resonance. Um, like any vibrating object, you shake it at the right frequency, the vibrations will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So these sort of circuits are used to tune a radio receiver. You send the signal you've picked in from the antenna into it, and because they only respond at certain frequencies, these frequencies over here, that means you can pick out just one station, let's say ABC666, as opposed to all the other AM stations, and listen to that one rather than all of them at the same time. So it's fundamentally important. What you do want to make this happen, however, is you need to be able to change the frequency. You need to be able to tune your radio to get different frequencies. And as you can see, to do that, you need to either change the inductance or the capacitance. Now, how could you do that? Well, one way would be to have, I don't know, a capacitor plate and be able to move the two plates away from each other or towards each other, because that will change the capacitance. That's rather hard, because in practice, capacitors are wrapped around each other in spiral patterns, so it's rather hard to expand or contract them. So what's normally done to change the frequency to tune a radio is to change the inductance. And how can you do that? Well, one approach would be, let's say you've got uh, your wire, and inside it you might have an iron core. Iron cores are often used inside these things because they're magnetic field causes the iron to light up, which amplifies the magnetic field. But what you could do is move that iron core in and out of the loop, and that will change the um, amount of amplification and hence change the inductance. Another approach is to have a loop and have, the say, the current comes in at this end, but the current comes out via a little contact or brush, which you can move back on forward. So if you have the brush here, the current will go through here, but then not go down the rest. Whereas if you move the contact over here, it'll go through the whole thing. So that's changing N, the number of loops in the wire. And that's another way to vary it. A third way, which is actually widely used in 
and long radios is you could have uh, two coils one shaped like that and another one over here and this one can be rotated so you've got the magnetic field coming out of the first one and hitting the second one but if you rotate it so the second one is something like this then the magnetic field is going to be perpendicular and therefore will not produce any mutual inductance from one to the other. And as you change the angle of the second one, the amount of inductance from one to the other varies. And you can use that also to tune your radio. So, these oscillating LC circuits are really important um, in all sorts of technological applications.